I call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. May I please have a motion to certify closed session? Madam Chair, I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board will in closed session discuss only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Thank you, Ms. Ompey. Can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Young. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Sorza, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Thank you. Um, I'd like to, uh, the next up is the Ple Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd like to invite uh, Luke Sipes up to the podium, please, to lead us in the pledge. Luke is a rising sixth grader at Berkeley Middle School. He is a fifer with the Colonial Williamsburg Fife and Drum, and he plays the saxophone. And he also participated in the morning news with Mr. D Van Dusen at Matthew Whaley. Is that right? And he's joined today by his parents, Brad and Kate. So if you'll lead us whenever you're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Luke. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. Sir, so we call attendance, please. Dr. Beers. Here. Ms. Hummel. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. Ms. Ownby. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. Thank you, Ms. Serza. Uh, Mr. Kelly, can I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? Madam Chair, I move approval of the agenda as presented with the exception of 7.12 revised policy JGD, G JGE due process safeguards. I move that to 9.05 in the action items. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Can I have a second, please? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Sosa, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Thank you very much. That brings us to 4.01, Announcements and Superintendent's Report. Dr. Herrick. Good evening, Madam Chair. This past Saturday, nearly 900 WJCC students received their high school diplomas. Congratulations to the graduates and to the families and WJCC staff members who, who supported these students throughout their years in our schools. Best wishes to the class of 2018. I look forward to hearing about your future accomplishments and I know you will make us proud. Also, more than 670 WJCC students will continue their education throughout the summer. Summer school begins on Tuesday, June 26th. We remind parents and students that there will be no summer school sessions on July 4th and 5th. Finally, I hope, I hope everyone enjoys a happy and restful summer break. If you're planning ahead, the 2018-19 school year calendar is available on the division's website, wjccschools.org. The first day of school will be September 4th, 2018, and we look forward to welcome, welcoming you all back in the fall. Those are all of the announcements I have this evening, Madam Chair. Dr. Heron, does anyone else have anything to add? Thank you. That brings us to board recognitions. Dr. Heron, do you have anything this evening? Madam Chair, there are no recognitions this evening. Wonderful. Well, if my colleagues would allow um, me, I'd like to make a special recognition this evening. We have a special guest in the audience, and that is Mrs. Jessie Heron, our superintendent's mother. Um, Mrs. Heron, we're delighted to have you, and we would like to, if you would join us, please, at the dais, we would like to, as a board, so if the board could join me as well, present a few uh, tokens of our gratitude to you.
Chief Thank you very Mr. much, uh, Madam Chair and board members. That was just delightful. I am a little bit biased, but I do have the best <laughs> mum in the world, and I love her dearly. <laughs> love you, mum. Thank you. That brings us to citizens' comments. Do we have any cards? We have one. Okay, we have one card this evening. Ms. Hummel, will you okay. read the instructions? Um, this is the time when citizens who have submitted speaker cards are invited to address the board. Speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their name for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. Each speaker is allocated three minutes, and time cannot be yielded to another speaker. Personnel matters are not discussed in open school board meetings, and we ask that you refrain from making reference to specific individuals. The board is interested in hearing all comments fully and requests that citizens refrain from verbal outbursts, applause, or any other type of demonstration. Although the board does not respond to comments at this time, please know that we are listening and we appreciate your time. Thank you for adhering to these guidelines. Madam Chair, my directions are concluded. Thank you, Ms. Hummel. Ms. Ombi? Mr. Paul Scott. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Paul Scott. I serve as Executive Director of Child Development Resources and here in that capacity tonight. I'm here to know to let you know that uh, Lisa Thomas and I are available to answer any questions about our lease, which is on the agenda, as well, and uh, also to provide some information I hope that might be helpful. CDR's Early Head Start program that's responsible for the program that's at uh, the 900 building at Lafayette it's partially funded by federal funds and allows us to serve 146 prenatal women and children, most of whom are served in their homes, but though there are some who are enrolled in our uh, year-round all-day child care centers. We serve low-income families in Williamsburg and James City County at the program uh, here at La located at Lafayette High School. Over the years, the centers moved between locations in Williamsburg, James City County Schools, and we are forever appreciative of the support for this partnership that was first initiated years ago by the schools. Our first step center was most recently housed in two modular classrooms uh, behind Lafayette High School. But right about the time James City County announced that it was not gonna support the special use permit for those trailers, there was the same time that American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, the Stimulus Act, uh, made funds available to renovate the idle auto shop there in the 900 building. We were successfully able to secure $800,000 in federal stimulus dollars to transform that shop into four state-of-the-art infant and toddler classrooms. The renovation included key upgrades such as HVAC and other important building improvements. The center serves 32 infants and toddlers aged six weeks to three years old whose parents are working in school or in job training. The wait list for the center has historically exceeded capacity, and that is the case today. The center is rated with four out of five stars on the Virginia Quality Rating System and is accredited by the National Association for the Education of Young Children. The care provided there is high quality and is one of the few available to low-income families in the community where average uh, cost of infant and toddler care is over $200 a week, which is far beyond the ability of most vulnerable families to afford. The vast majority of the children served in the center eventually make their way to the Williamsburg James City County Elementary Schools and the skills they acquire while they're with us are those that were envisioned many years ago by the Williamsburg James City County Preschool Task Force. In addition, we are able to hire some of the Lafayette High School graduates and did so recently for someone to work in the center. Simply put, the partnership works to improve the lives of Williamsburg James City County students. I understand there's pressing space and safety concerns that the boards expressed recently and we are respectful of that as we share them. Uh, we recently had to invest significant amount of money in safety uh, upgrades to our main office where we have a developmental playgroup, and we are struggling with some space issues as well. Uh, regarding the safety concerns, CDR recently provided our entire staff with active shooter training from the Williamsburg James City County Police Department any safety concerns that exist. We currently hold a $3 million liability uh, insurance coverage, which names Williamsburg James City County as an additional insured, which is a million dollars uh, above and beyond what's required in the lease. I mentioned earlier that the federal government partially funds early Head Starts program. And to explain, when the feds give us a grant, what they give us is 80% of the grant, and they require us to raise the other 20% in non-federal share or in kind. And for our early Head Start grant, that totals $389,000. CDR accomplishes this primarily through three sources. Cash from donations from York County and space for our center there in uh, the Griffin Yates Center and the donation of space at the 900 building. 
the space in the 900 building provides us with 600, or I'm sorry, $67,300 towards our non-federal share uh, obligation, which is based on the fair, the assessment of the fair market value of the space. Uh, so as the lease is being considered, I just wanted to be sure uh, to point out that losing that space would not only cause us to lose that portion of our non-federal share, but would require us to pay rent in a similar space, effectively doubling the financial impacts on our operations. Unfortunately, the vast majority of CDR's funding is restricted, meaning we cannot move money from one program to another, so we would have to go out and raise those funds. Uh, to give you a little insight, to when the school board adopted its most recent CIP, we understood that our time at Lafayette High School was limited and we needed to make some plans uh, to establish a center either in our own control or of, of other uh, source. Uh, and we hope that the timetable that we saw was fairly reliable and had targeted and communicated with our board that 2022 was about the time we needed to be vacated out of that center. So the new timetables uh, create a few issues for us, obviously. Moving a child care center is no easy task. Um, there are no currently empty and available child care centers uh, in the community, which means that we have to identify a suitable space, secure funds and approvals to conduct a renovation and then physically move. There are currently over 1,600 federal protocols that dictate the work that we do, particularly the physical dimensions and layouts of the space. Uh, and there's more restrictions and things layered on top of that for the Virginia Quality and NACI accreditation. Uh, so moving our center by 2022 was certainly workable. Attempting to do so in 14 months certainly presents a few challenges. So I understand the pressures under you on you for space, uh, but I was here to ask if there's any flexibility at all that could exist in the timetables that we would greatly appreciate that. Thank you, and Mr. Thank Scott. You, thank you for your service. Appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, that brings us to the consent agenda, which is item 7.01, approval of minutes from May 15th, 2018 and June 5th, 2018. 7.02, financial report and monthly bills and payroll. 7.03, personnel actions as presented to the board in closed session. 7.04, revise and recode policy CBD evaluation of the superintendent to policy CBG evaluation of the superintendent. 7.05, new policy CBD superintendent's contract compensation and benefits. 7.06, revised policy DA, management of funds. 7.07, .07, revised policy DB, annual budget. 7.08, revised policy DGC, school activities funds. 7.09, revised policy GCDA, conditions of employment. 7.10, revised policy IIBD, school libraries and media centers, and 7.11, revised policy JFC, areas of offense and their definitions. May I please have a motion? So moved. <laughs> Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. I moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Thurza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Thank you. The consent agenda passes. That brings us to proposed agenda items. The first one is 8.01 VSBA voting delegate and alternate delegate. Typically, that uh, is the, um, the chair and the vice chair serve in that capacity, and, uh, and the board uh, is asked to appoint um, at the next meeting, and then Ms. Sirs, as our clerk, would then convey to the VSBA who our delegate and alternate delegate is, and that is the um, person that's, that, go, that attends the VSBA delegate session assembly at the November um, VSBA annual meeting at, at Williamsburg. I think it's like November 15th or 16th. So anyway, if that's up for discussion, uh, Ms. Ombi and I are happy to serve, but we're also happy to I personally am happy to have you serve. <laughs> Me too. So, um, so at the next meeting, um, Ms. Serza, if you could craft the motion appropriately for the next meeting, that would be great. Thank you. All right. That brings us to 8.02, purchase of elementary school student laptops. Here. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Landers is here to present a request for purchase of laptops at the next school board meeting. Mr. Landers, thank you. 
Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Heron. Uh, this evening, we are asking for your consideration and approval at the July meeting of purchasing elementary school student use laptops. The purchase will take place in July and use fiscal year 2019 funds. The purchase is part of the planned technology refresh at the elementary school of the elementary school student use devices and will provide 2,105 laptops and supporting Lenovo services. The cost for the purchase is $749,928 and is included in the school board's approved fiscal year 19 budget. Thank you and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Landers? Kelly? I really, Mr. Landers, I don't, I don't really have a question, but I'm, I, we sit up here and we vote and you buy a couple thousand laptops now and a couple thousand laptops later and you're, you're in your staff's ability to keep up with all these things just kind of amazes me. So I just want to extend my appreciation to you and the hard work that your team does in, in managing all of that technology. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anything else? So, Mr. Landers, just for the public um, to understand, this is not a one-to-one -one no, initiative. Could you just... No, the, these laptops will be embedded in the classroom for use uh, within the school. They are not to take home with the students. We'll put this on the next meeting agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is... Next item is 8.03, 2018-2023 Strategic Plan, Goal Themes, and Proposed Goal Language. Thank you, Madam Chair. This evening, I'm going to present to you uh, proposed goals for the next strategic plan. There's been a very comprehensive process leading up to this, and uh, Mr. Thorpe is going to present a little bit about the process and then the actual proposed goals this evening. Mr. Thorpe very kindly agreed to step in for Dr. Murphy, who's actually on military leave uh, over the next two weeks. Thank you, Mr. Thorpe. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Heron. It is my honor to be here tonight to present the work of a division in community-wide collaboration to chart the course for Williamsburg, James City County Public Schools for the next five years. The six goals that we will present to you this evening have been developed after four months of extensive study and evaluation of our practices, as well as meaningful conversations with our stakeholders. These goals will lay the foundation on which our strategic plan will be built. Our work has been guided by the vision and mission statements and the core values of our school division. Every discussion has been anchor, anchored by this question. How does this contribute to student success? The strategic planning process began in February 2018 and has been facilitated by the Valbrun Consulting Group. The first phase included an initial review of our school division, including a survey of division staff, families, and community members. In April, over 30 stakeholder groups participated in three days worth of focus groups to gather perceptions of organizational strengths, internal and external challenges, and opportunities for growth and development. The conversations that emerged were wide ranging and thoughtful, allowing the voices of all key constituents to be a part of the process. Division staff synthesized and prioritized the outcomes of the information gathering phase and identified the areas of focus that will lead us to our vision for Williamsburg James City County Schools. The strategic themes that we will address with our plan are the following. Academic achievement and college and career readiness. Education equity. Communication and engagement safety and security, human capital and positive culture, and organizational efficiency and effectiveness. The strategic plan by its very nature, it's a holistic document built on the realization that interconnections and collaborations are crucial to success. Therefore, the themes are not reflected to, uh, are not presented to reflect priority order, but instead to be considered part of an interconnected framework. Work associated with one individual theme will support and enhance other theme areas. 
An essential component of the entire process is collaboration and seeking feedback to ensure that the plan represents our division as a whole. Opportunities to gain feedback and fresh perspectives have and will occur with each stage of development. I believe I can speak for the entire team when I say that this has been an invaluable part of the process. The strategic plan is also a living document, one constantly evolving as we anticipate and respond to student needs. Our work will continue this summer with the development of strategies to support our goals and establishing action teams responsible for implementation. The action teams will also continue with collab Excuse me. The action teams will also continue the collaborative nature of the process by working across teams and reaching out to staff and stakeholders for feedback throughout the plan's implementation. At the same time, we'll be creating a communication plan to present the strategic plan to our staff and also to our community. I hope that this brief overview of our work to date has been helpful. On behalf of our senior leadership team and the extended team that has been part of the process, it is my privilege to present the proposed goals for our strategic plan. Goal one, transform teaching and learning to ensure student success in post-secondary education and careers. This is the heart of what we do every day in Williamsburg, James City County Public Schools, and it's the purpose of public education. Some strategies that we may employ to reach this goal include collaborative teaching structures, involving students in making decisions about their learning, and expanding opportunities for students to participate in authentic workplace experiences. Goal two, foster a learning environment that respects the diversity of students and provides targeted equitable opportunities for success. Educational equity is important for all of us here in Williamsburg, James City County. It was a constant theme that arose in the conversations with our community. This goal will guide our work in many areas. For example, a few supportive strategies include expectations for positive relationship-focused classroom learning environments where student differences are appreciated and celebrated. Ensuring capital and operational budgets address inequities in facilities and educational programming. And building a sense of belonging, social connection, and academic engagement for students, especially during transition years, such as rising to sixth and ninth grades. Goal three. Cultivate a culture of open and effective communication to inform and engage all of our stakeholders. One of the common themes throughout our discussions has been that communication engagement internally and externally is vital to the health of our organization. Strategies that support a culture of open and effective communication as well as engagement may include the following. The development and implementation of a comprehensive communications and engagement plan. Expanding our communication tools and resources to better engage culturally and linguistically, excuse me, culturally and linguistically diverse families. And strengthening and revitalizing our community and business partnerships, as well as our volunteer programs. Goal four. Ensure a fully integrated approach to safety and security that encompasses both the physical environment and the social and emotional needs of students. We all agree that the safety and security of our schools is of paramount importance. Strategies we feel will promote this goal include providing students with essential resources that support their social, emotional, and mental health. Fostering a culture of inclusiveness and support for all students and establishing a task force charged with developing and implementing plans for assessing and improving the security of physical facilities and campuses. Goal five, recruit high quality staff and retain our exemplary workforce by creating an environment where transparency and trust are the norm. 
A common refrain when asked about the strength of the school division is the people. And we couldn't agree more. We are fortunate to have an amazing group of people making up the WJCC workforce. It will take their commitment and efforts to enact this strategic plan. Therefore, this is an essential goal. Some strategies that will support our human capital and promotion of a positive working environment include developing and implementing a leadership development and mentoring program, developing a five-year compensation strategy aligned with market analysis recommendations, and strengthening recruitment to provide highly qualified and diverse applicant pools. <clears throat> Finally, goal six. Optimize division effectiveness and efficiency by establishing and strengthening processes and systems. The work of a school division is complex and demanding. This goal ensures that the behind the scenes work of the division most effectively supports truly innovative and impactful teaching and learning. Some examples of strategies we may use are establishing a systemic and collaborative process for change management that includes all stakeholders, analyzing and improving the effectiveness of business and operation processes, and ensuring the alignment of budget development with strategic initiatives. To conclude, I'd like to thank everyone across the school division and the community who contributed so far to the strategic planning process. Because of your hard work and your commitment to a quality school system, our strategic plan promises to be an important touchstone for guiding the work of this school system over the next five years. I am happy to address any questions that you may have. Before we ask Mr. Thorpe questions, just a point of clarification. So Dr. Heron, we're discussing this tonight with the intent on adopting the six goals in July. Is that correct? That's correct, Madam Chair. Some of the strategies that Mr. Thorpe presented tonight are just samples of the many strategies that are already being developed behind the goals, but the board, the board will consider the goals and, and hopefully be ready to adopt them at the next meeting. So these are for your consideration this evening. Um, Mr. Thorpe's provided the context and also some of the, the things that will come in behind the strategies and behind the goals. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Thorpe? Dr. Beers? Yeah, my question I have is, um, are, is this in stone now or, or can we, is this a draft? Can we comment or are we not? Absolutely. The goals have been created over a period of time with, with lots of input. We're at the point now where we want the board's input on the goals and mainly the, the content and context of the goals more than anything. Um, so yes, absolutely, if you have suggestions, that I, would be great. I, uh, <clears throat> I guess I have two comments, uh, one for each of two goals. The very first goal, um, I'm, I understand the value of the word transform but I also understand that a lot of teaching and learning is going on right now that is ensuring student success in post-secondary education and careers. I would rather see language like support teaching and learning that ensures student success in post-secondary education and career. Um, and for goal number five, I, I don't have language for this, but um, I um, and I've, I've, I have lived with as in my professional life for years, uh, valuing uh, human capital um, in the field of, especially in the field of, of teaching and learning. Um, what I don't see here is anything, I, I see creating an environment where transparency and trust are the norm, which I totally agree with that. I, I think that's really important. But I also think that we need to support that human capital, whether it's in facilities management, whether it's in um, assessment, whether it's in instruction, um, is somewhere that, um, um, sort of uh, highlights the value, the need and value for professional development. 
I'm not sure where that goes. But. Yeah, under underneath this goal, there are there will absolutely be strategies that specifically highlight the development of staff because that's one of the ways in which we value and retain quality staff. So some of the the goals are very broad and far-reaching, but there will be f several strategies underneath each one already written, and one of them does identify that development piece, which is so crucial for our organization. I, um, and I, I certainly don't want to diminish the value and the importance of the transparency and trust, because we've all been talking about that for, for several years now, and, and I think it's really important to highlight that. Um, but the, I think the other equally important thing is we have um, a, a very talented workforce with many different kinds of responsibilities and many different skill needs. And I just want to make sure that that is because that costs money. But I think it's really important, especially today. You know, the rate of change um, is almost geometric now. And to help our workforce uh, at least stay equal, if not on top of that. Um, somewhere, I, I would like to see some language that addresses that. That's all. Okay, that's it. Dr. Kelly, do you have anything? Yeah, I share Dr. Beers' concern with the word transform in goal one, because I don't want to denigrate what our teacher, the quality work that our teachers are doing now. It almost looks like we have to make a sea change to improve, to transform what our teachers are doing. But I also appreciate the the world we have to make progress on our teaching and, and learning to ensure the student success. So I, I, uh, I, I, I definitely hear what he's saying there. I also like the fact that the goal it says, it doesn't say it's you know, fully accredited schools, doesn't say SOL scores, but is more outcome driven of where our students, where our students are going. Um, the struggle there will be to find metrics that um, show that you've done that because a lot of times when our kids go out the as soon as they cross the stage, we don't see them again, and it's hard to, hard to figure out what their success has been. Um, you know, with all these goals, uh, you know, this is the, these are the bones that that uh, we're going to put the rest of the flesh on. So it's so we um, we'll have to see how that all comes about, and 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 as we start start building the strategies underneath, we can still change the goals a little bit to to suit those strategies going forward. But uh, I think I think affirmation that these are the right goals. To start with, I think is is uh, is an appropriate thing to do at this at this juncture. Um, uh, goal two with educational equity. Equity doesn't mean doesn't mean equal. So I, I think that's I have no problem with that. Um, to, to goal five, where you you were talking about the strength is our people in the system, and and um, there's there's that is obviously very true. Eighty five percent of our budget is people. Um, our product is people and the students that walk across the stage. Uh, so um, having, that, having that in here, uh, recruit high quality staff, retain our workforce, I think those are all good, um, good goals to have. So as, as I look at the goals for the, you know, as, a, as a first look, um, I think they are appropriate and, uh, and correct as far as where the school system needs to go. Young? Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Thorpe. I understand how difficult this is. I've sat on many of these committees, so I know the wordsmithing that goes on. But my question also has to do with that word transform. Um, can, you, can you explain to us why they chose that word, or is that asking too much? Yeah, again, no, no, not a bit. Um, over the course of the focus groups and looking at the feedback and then looking at the profile of a Virginia graduate, we... Uh, we pondered what exactly was necessary in order to get our students from where they are now to where they need to be in order to meet the demands of the profile of a Virginia graduate, and that includes not just college and career readiness, but communication and creativity and critical thinking. And we thought that some bold steps would be necessary. This was the part of, again, several focus groups that came up with that action verb, transform. We have reverence and, and great appreciation for the work that's being done in the classrooms, as Dr. Beers and Mr. Kelly have said. Uh, again, we're just looking at the end in mind when we bring that word transform to you. Okay. Um, I, I do want to say thank you very much for the focus on success in post-secondary and career, because if, if we're not doing that, we're not doing anything that's 
really important to students because eventually they're going to leave our buildings, they're going to leave our auspices, and they need to have the tools that they need. So I appreciate that very much being a part of the goal. And I, the rest of the goals I can tell are very thought out and very thoughtful. So thank you very much for your, you, you and all of those focus groups did. I'm sure that they are, they're glad it's over. Great deal of work and many wonderful people. Thank you. I like the word transform. I do think we need a sea change. Um, I, I, of course, we support our teachers and our current um, you know, way of doing things. However, we've got um, some major challenges ahead of us with the new portrait of a, of a graduate. We have major challenges in the CTE side of things, and I think we need that kind of action word. I think the fact that it's goal number one and our uh, students are with us for 16 years, and if anything uh, about Saturday didn't come out loud and clear, we are sending over, a, every year, we're sending over a 1,000 kids out into the world, and we do need to transform the way we propel those and, and prepare them for going out into our community as much as possible to set them up for success. So I like, I like the action word of transform, and I, I like the fact that it, it takes people back a little bit and makes them really think about our number one goal. So. You want to add something, Ms. Young? You, you. Well, I was, I was just thinking what uh, Ms. Hummel said, and I mean, success is what we inevitably want for our students. And it's always my concern as I watch those students I wish they would have to stop and tell us, okay, this is my plan for when I leave these doors because that's, that's our goal is when I'm going to the Army, I'm going to, to school, I'm going to go to a trade school or whatever, but I would, I just, I, I mean, that is probably my biggest concern It's I want these kids to leave and know that they're going to have a goal that's going to help them become successful. So to me, this number one is helping for this uh, post-secondary uh, thing is, is critical, so thank you again for that. Bombi? Yes, thank you. I um, would have to um, echo and concur with both Mr. Kelly and also Ms. Hummel. So I think that all five goals are, are very appropriate, and I think that they um, are responding to citizens' comments, um, comments we've heard from our funding partners, from parents, from the portrait of a graduate. I think all five are critically important um, with achievement and equity, community engagement, safety and security, um, human, human capital, retention, um, but then most importantly, organizational efficiency and effectiveness, and that's, and that's something new that we can spotlight. I, too, really like the word transform. Um, I think that we do need to do things differently um, and, and didn't want to wordsmith. Um, I, I liked what I thought I heard you say, so there are, there are six goals, but they're not ranked order, so we will work Correct. on all of them and they're all kind of interconnected, and I think that's important. I appreciate giving us a sampling of some of the strategies that helped me understand the context. Um, so uh, kudos. I, this makes me feel very comfortable with the direction that the division is going in. Thank you. Just to kind of recap, with regard to number one, so I think everybody's prepared to support it uh, uh, as is, um, but there's some discussion about transform and making sure that that's not interpreted as uh, um, a negative reflection on what's on the currently it's good absolutely practices. not what's meant by that and making sure that in number five there are strategies that really get it as um, significant investment in professional development I, I hope I, I paraphrase that okay dr. beers um, so yeah I, I too like this and, and, and I'm very excited about it and appreciate the process um, I, one thing, and I don't want to wordsmith, so I don't want to suggest alternate language, but one thing that sticks out to me as, as an outlier, and number five is the use of the word our, the use of that possessive. If you read our vision, mission, and then our goals, it, it, at no point is there the use of the possessive. So it just seems odd to me um, that it's, it doesn't seem consistent with everything else that has been presented. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that out. I'm not sure if that's something that can be brought into conformity, I guess. Yeah, I think I would comment on, on a couple of the, the, the 
statements tonight, I think it's very important as we roll out the final version that we put it very clearly in context about how much we appreciate the value of current staff and how good they are at their job. And somehow if, when we put these goals in context, then it won't be read as they're not good and they need to change dramatically. But this is actually envisioning what the future will look like and how we get towards the future. So I, th I think your comments are, are very, very helpful for us if we don't change transform, because and some like and some don't like, we need to put it in a very strong context and value our current staff, which of course we do. Um, also, I just wanted to add um, on safety and security. I, I, I like the way that that goal reads and I support it. I just want to throw in there that I think that even though I wouldn't add it into the goal language, I hope that some strategies speak to the connection between social, emotional well-being and physical well-being. Um, I, I, that's, you know, physical wellness is a, is a part of that. And then also, really quickly, I just wanted to, this is something that I haven't shared with the board yet because I haven't gotten to it. I haven't gotten to my National School Board Association meeting notes yet, um, even though that was two months ago or three months ago, was it? But I did want to, um, one of the things that they unveiled at National School Board Association was their visit, vision for equity in public education. And because we're talking about equity, I just wanted to read this, a few sentences. But the NSB adopted this statement. Uh, we affirm in our actions that each student can, will, and shall learn. Educational equity is the intentional allocation of resources, instruction, and opportunities according to need. We recognize that based on factors including, but not limited to, disability, race, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status, students are deprived of equitable education opportunities. This requires that discriminatory practices, prejudice, and beliefs be identified and eradicated. And I just wanted to um, share that because it met with a standing ovation at NSBA, and I think it's connected to you know, one of the goals in this plan and felt like it was an opportunity to share that with you all and the public. But, so with that, are we all ready to move forward with that? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Thorpe. Appreciate it. Okay, the next item is 8.04 Revised Policy JHCF Student Wellness. Dr. Heron. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Bourgeois is going to take us through some uh, changes from last time about the wellness policy. There, were some, there was some healthy discussion by the board on several aspects of the policy and actually of the regulations underneath the policy. And we're going to just give you an opportunity to discuss those a little bit more again tonight before we vote on the actual policy. I like Ms. the way you said healthy discussion. Always. <laughs> it's a wellness policy. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Heron and Ms. Heron. Um, thank you for letting us come back before you. Following our um, presentation at the work session two weeks ago, um, we did have um, members of the committee go back and look at a couple of the bullets that are on the beginning of the policy. So the changes that we did are primarily between, oh, let me get my right June 5th one. What was initially lines 30 through 45, the changes can now be found between lines 33 and 41. Um, essentially, we combined the first two bullets and took out um, some of the wording about nutrition standards so that you see lines 34 through 38. Um, we took out or served and we took from the second bullet and added to the first bullet and must meet the nutrition guidelines for competitive foods outlined by the code. And then um, we reworded what was um, well, we added a new bullet, I'm sorry. Lines 40 and 41 are a new bullet about nutrition standards for other food and beverages available on the school campus during the school day will be outlined in the regulation. So essentially what we tried to do was further delineate what was required as far as what we're selling during the school day and then what we will then have regulations about about those items that we do not sell. Any questions or comments? Mrs. Young? 
Uh, first, first of all, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I'm, this is going to be really hard for me, but uh, um, I, I, I understand exactly that the board um, only creates policy, and I understand that we're voting on the policy. We're not voting on the regulations. But I find it very hard to support a policy such as this that is then going to increase regulations that are going to make it stricter for our cafeterias and, and uh, uh, parties, et cetera. And I, I, I can't support that because I think that we don't have no right to, or responsibility either, to expect uh, people to fo follow such strict regulations. I, I find that very onerous, and I realize we're not voting on the regulations, but I, and so I want to make that very clear. But um, um, I think we're, it's very intrusive. I think it's onerous. Uh, the federal and state regulations that they're proposing that go along, if we approve this, which I'm sure it will be approved, it will not be approved by me. But I, I find it just wrong that we have now in, we are now going in so deep into what's happening with food in a school. I think that is that it, we're, we're erring on our part. First of all, I think we're, uh, whatever happened to parents in this? I mean, it's like the school has again taken over what we think students need, and we are, we are willing to, to, to do that. I, I can't support that. I think uh, we're, we're really initiating, we're, we're falling uh, prey to something that should have been stopped a long time ago, and I understand the goal of wellness, believe me, I do. I, I'm all f I understand about the obesity crisis, but I honestly don't think that this policy addresses that. And looking at, comparing it to the VSBA policy, we've added language that is not in the VSBA poly policy. So we're encouraging, we're not only encur encouraging, we're supporting those regulations. And um, I... I just, I just can't do that. But I do want to thank you. I know how much time you spend on this, and I, I do thank uh, all of the efforts that have been put in there. But I think it's the wrong approach because one of the things that um, when I was talking to somebody, it, it was pointed out that maybe parents don't want their kids served that food. And I, and having been in that position, I agree with that. But there's also some nice words that you can teach your children. No, thank you. Uh, if, so if something is served that they don't like, they can say the, those words and, and still have more freedom. And um, I, I just, I'm, I'm really struggling with this policy. And, um, and having looked at it, I, um, I, I just don't think it, it matches with what I think of uh, free and public education has to do. To, to try to answer one of your questions or... or um thoughts there. Um, there was a committee that was made up of a representative group and it included parents and students and building principals that worked over a period of time. This actually started in 2016 and they broke into subcommittees and worked on the different areas. So there's really been some thoughtful work put into this. It's also been shared with all of our principals and they were given an opportunity for feedback prior to bringing it to you for the first time. I understand. But I, I don't know that they completely recognize how strict this is going to be, but they're going to find out. And I find it um, ludicrous that, that somebody in the school, such as a school nurse, could tell somebody that you can't bring that in. That, that bothers me tremendously. But thank you, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Bourgeois. Mr. Kelly? I think, I think um, some of the concerns I had of, on this policy were alleviated by taking out the words or served so food food and beverages sold on the school campus so um, so so if someone wants to bring in something for the class they are it seems that they're still allowed to do that so it's not as onerous as it was the last time we we read this where you know the there has been some flexibility created. So, yes. so I, I, and, and anything that, and again, this is this is regarding during the school day. So the concession stands for the basketball games, the, the, the organizations that want to sell things after school, those types of things are not included in this yeah, during so I, the school day. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate those words. So I, I, uh, I think that goes a long way towards alleviating my concerns. Thank you.
Dr. Beers? Yeah, um, a couple of things. I, um, I, I, um, I do like, I, I didn't have any difficulty <laughs> really with the, the, the first draft you came out with, but I think those couple of changes make it even stronger. And I, I also think um, that um, uh, my feeling is if there are regulations related to food or nutrition, we have to support the regulations. It's not a case of, well, we're not going to support the regulations. Well, we are going to support the regulations. The other thing is um, I, I do also think that a child does have the right to say no thank you. But we're not going to pull out the junk food that he can pick because he doesn't want to eat the other food. So it's like, you're right, you don't have to eat this nutritious food, but we don't have any alternative food for you to eat. If you want to bring your lunch to school, fine. But this is what we're serving now. So I, I, don't, have a, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and I'm also reminded of a conversation I had with two different principals not that long ago. One of the principals added up how many cupcakes a third grader might consume in a year because everybody's birthday was celebrated with a birthday party. And the number was astronomical. You know, 40, 50, 60 cupcakes because of parties. And then I talked to another principal who said, well, you know, that was never a real issue here. We pick three days during the year when we celebrate birthdays. So you can bring your stuff in, and if your birthday's in this time frame, then your class gets to do it, or, or whatever. However, I, I don't exactly remember all the logistics. So I'm not, um, the party thing, if we're going to get into the party thing, then we probably should have a party policy that goes across the schools. So there is a standard that basically says, no, wait a minute, we're not going to serve, this little kid is not going to eat 80 cupcakes during the year. But come up with something that is sensible. I understand um, the need and value for kids to celebrate each other's birthdays. I, I get that. I don't have that's not the problem. I, I just, um, I feel really strongly that it's very important when these, when these kids are little, when they come to school, that this is a, um, this is a way of looking at um, your health, your nutrition, and this is what we're going to do. And, and who knows, um, if, we, if we did some of those things really early on, it might break that. Um, uh, that obesity chain, which is horrible. We're the fattest country in the world. Be and a lot of it is due to um, the kinds of food that we eat. And I really think it's important to create a standard to, uh, you know, set a goal. Maybe we should plug that somewhere into one of the goals. I, I, you know, <laughs> it is sort of a safety, uh, whatever. I, I don't care what you do with that. But I, um, I just, I, I, I am not bothered by um, uh, telling a student, um, this is, you know, you have four choices. That's it. You know, we're not going to, we don't, uh, you know, unless you have, um, uh, you know, nutritional needs, or there's some, uh, you know, some that kind of thing. But I just, uh, uh, and if so, if it's got some teeth, I'm all right with that. I'm okay with it. Thank you. Ms. Mrs. Taylor? Great. So in layman's terms, what are going to be the ramifications? If we adopt this policy, what are the changes going to be that we'll see in the schools that are different from what we're doing today? I think that's the real question. <laughs> Let Ms. Laza help us with that. Okay, so the, the changes that the policy make um, to what's served or sold in the cafeteria are those changes that they're required to make in order to continue being federally reimbursed for free and reduced lunch. 
Um, many of those changes they have slowly adopted. We've been very progressive actually as a school division um, and our child nutrition services have adopted many of those changes already and they are in place. So in terms of what you're seeing for school lunch, we're already serving the whole grains. We're already serving those healthier items and have been for a number of years. It's not going to look dramatically different. Um, uh, so policy-wise, to address that, it, school lunch will look very similar. Thank you. Um, what about parties and what can be served? So the way the policy is currently written, um, the parties are talked about in the regulations, not in the policy itself. So currently in the regulations, um, the parties are being included um, with a recommendation by the committee that parties follow uh, the Smart Snacks guidelines. So it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to bring in a cupcake. It means that you're being asked to follow those Smart Snacks guidelines. Um, and those were in Appendix A. Um, and they have nutrition standards to the foods that are being served to the students. And just to make things easier for parents, is that something that the cafeteria can perhaps help with? So yes. if, for example, it's someone's birthday and they do want to bring in cupcakes, but they're not sure whether they meet the new standards. The cafeterias currently have a compliant cupcake that they can order from the cafeteria. And I have spoken with Ms. Haley, and she is willing to make sure that that is available to parents. Um, I also want to note that many of our elementary schools have already um, adopted um, healthy birthday celebrations. Um, for example, Matoka Elementary um, has for, I think, about five years now had um, the birthday book club. So instead of bringing in uh, cupcakes, the parents will um, fund a book for the school library and that book is then read in the classroom on that day to celebrate that child's birthday. And there are little treats given to um, the students in the classroom to celebrate the birthday, little bookmarks and, and different treats that go with it. Um, so we're definitely encouraging the schools to um, adopt practices such as that, that look at alternatives to food to celebrate birthdays. And just my final thing is I ultimately support this policy. Um, I would just want us to be really, really careful in how we communicate to parents and make sure it's really, really clear and that it's not presented as, as punitive, but rather giving all of the positive alternatives. Okay. Yes, so I concur with Miss um, Hummel and then to Mrs. Taylor's point with regard to what the changes will look like in our actual buildings. So I appreciate that the language or served is, it has been removed, but in terms of things that are sold, that will impact student organizations, clubs, who might sell items, food items, to raise money. So, so that, is, that is an mm -hmm. impact. So Just students will... Just school day. Right. right, and they typically do. So... National right. Junior Honor Society would be prohibited from selling candy bars. Um, if the candy bar did not meet the Smart Snacks guidelines, yes. So just wanted to make that clear. So that so some things will look different. And then one of my concerns expressed at the work, last work session was, um, particularly at the secondary level, you know, some of the, the, the foreign language classes do have an opportunity to tie instruction to... Um, Translating, translating a recipe and making that recipe and bringing that in. So, and we talked about allowing those things to continue to happen. But so, will or do those still have to meet the, the healthy smart? Right. So that recommendation um, was was brought back to uh, the chairs of the wellness policy committee, um, and they had made the recommendation that we could put into the regulations. Um, an exclusion for um, food that is uh, pertinent to educational uh, 
events or educational purposes. So if the food was specific to uh, what was being learned, if you were learning um, in French class how to make crepes, that would be um, allowed. And they wouldn't have to request an exclusion each time. It wouldn't be an administrative process. They would just be allowed to do that. That would be mm -hmm. included in the regulation. Two beers. Um, <clears throat> I've become uh, more aware of the fact that, especially at the high school level, that there are a number of students who um, have been moving towards becoming vegetarian. Do we provide um, at the high school level meals that would meet the requirements that we're talking about? In other words, protein and all those other. Right. Um, so that has been a growing concern for child nutrition mm -hmm. services. Um, we have been doing um, kind of meatless Monday type options uh, for vegetarian um, students. And we have um, always on the menu a vegetarian option. So there's a salad um, that you can get um, without the meat. Um, there are other options for students. And it is something that we're encouraging Child Nutrition Services to continue to develop more and more options for, definitely. Well, I appreciate, um, I'm ready to support this policy and I appreciate all the background work that went into both the policy and the regulations, even though I know we're not voting on those. Um, and so, and I just wanted to, this is a time sensitive uh, item, is that correct? It needs to be done at the next meeting, is that correct? Okay. So this will then migrate to the next meeting agenda for action. There's no other questions. Thank you, Dr. Lazar. Thank you, Ms. Bourgeois, I appreciate it. Okay. That brings us to 8.05, request from Child Development Resources for lease renewal at Lafayette High School, Dr. Heron. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just bringing this back to the board again for further discussion. There were lots of questions last time, and we've provided the school board with answers to those questions. Mr. Kelly? Uh, yeah, I appreciate Mr. Scott coming tonight and, and talking to us about um, the CDR and, the, and uh, the lease at Lafayette High School. I, th I think he fully understands the concerns that we have regards to uh, providing an educational space for our children for the students at Lafayette High School and uh, certainly we understand his his um, issues as well as far as providing a location for that um, program uh, I, I certainly support the, re the renewal of the uh, lease this year um, as far as I'm concerned that you know, if we get to a point where we're funded uh, we have a design and we're ready to start doing construction that's a, that's the point where we need to be um, looking to trying to segue uh, child development resources out of, out of Lafayette. Um, I think it would not be in the public's best interest. Um, the federal grant money is public money um, for us to, to, to terminate their lease any time prior to us being ready to move construction folks in there to do work. So um, we have, we obviously have demands on our high school space and, and um, child development resources had a you know, by the time we get to the point where we're ready to do construction, we'll have had a good 10-year run and we'll have transformed what was um, underutilized space into uh, usable space, even though we'll, we will have to make some adjustments for it for our high school, our high school students. Um, I, I think that, uh, I think we all have fully communicated, we all understand each other's positions, we all understand each other's um, needs, and uh, I am certainly in, in favor of renewing this lease probably for this year and for next year um, because it will take us two years before we have a design and understand what we're ready to do with that space. So I think we should move forward with Anyone else? Dr. Beers? I, I uh, do not support the termination uh, of the <coughs> lease with CDR. And as I understand it, we're not at the, the, the... You do not support the... Termination of the lease, August 31, 2019. But we're talking about the lease renewal. What? We're talking about renewing the lease. We're not talking about terminating the lease. It's okay. a one-year lease. It's a one-year lease. One year lease. So would it, okay, what is that? We'll no longer be available after August 31, 2019. 
No, we're looking at the CDR lease renewal request dated 6518. We're talking about what's what we're talking about is the renewal for one year for the CDR lease. Which one is it? Um, it's, All, what, what I see, it's not, I see two documents here. One of them says termination of CDR lease agreement, and then down below it says termination of CDR it's before lease agreement. That, it's before that, and it's the lease WJCC CDR. 18.0901. So we're, vote, sorry, we're voting on this one. That's not it. That's Dr. Beers, if I could attempt to clarify, the, it's the lease that's up for renewal this year that the board is looking okay. at. Is this under 9.06? Is it not 9.06? Right under the data source. Jim. Right under data source. It's the second item under data 8 .05. source. 8.05. Okay, sorry. I'm looking at the Dr. Heron, you were talking. Sorry. Yes, I just wanted to clarify that it's the release, at least it's up for renewal for one year. However, due to the board discussion at the last meeting, one of the questions was what would what would we need to do legally if we were not to renew the lease or wanted to only re renew the lease for a period of time. So the docu other document you're looking at probably is what we would need to do legally if we were not to renew the lease at all, or if we were to renew it and this was the final renewal. But so there's, that was just an option that legally that the board could choose to use if they were to go there this evening. If I, it's provided there as a sample document, it's is that correct? It's just a sample document yeah. under with legal advice from the attorney due to the conversation of the board last week. All right, I stand corrected then. Then I, I support this lease, but I do I I am not going to support in the future terminating the relationship with CDR. Um, they um, have provided um, a, a valuable service over the years. Uh, they still have our students engaged um, in a, in activity um, at that uh, location, and um, I just. Uh, um, I'm not convinced that that space is so valuable to us. One of the things, and maybe this is related to some of the discussion, we're not, you know we're dealing with, or we will be dealing with, either expanding our existing high schools, or ultimately building a new high school. Correct. No decision has been made about that. Um, so when you talk about design, explain to me which, what design are you talking about? Somebody used the, the term design. I, I just want to make sure I understand what that is. We don't know. We don't know what so we're designing. Just, okay. So that's why, that's why so I So that can't be used as, it's not being used as a reason then, because we don't have a design. And we're not even at that point of even having the design to be talking about um, or, or uh, suggesting that we shouldn't continue to renew the lease with uh, CDR. Yes, Madam Chair, I think that um, the board recognizes the long relationship that we've had with CDR. Um, they have served many children Many have become WJCC students, but I think it is it is evident that we need more space. And while we do not know what what that space will look like, I'm I'm fully comfortable renewing for a following year. Um, but if our funding partners come back and are able to to give us funding before 2022 to expand or to build, I. I, I I, I think things are somewhat in flux, and so I think it's hard for us to say um, that, that the CIP that's out there now that says 2022 is, is a hard and fast um, timeline. So I think certainly renewing for a year um, is, is prudent, but then recognizing that we are, we are busting at the seams, and we chose as a board to, to not 
um, to delay, to delay so we could decide if we were going to expand or build. Um, to delay what? To, to expand or build. So we, we pulled things. We, we only delayed registering of the high school. No, we, re we delayed our CIP request. Right, I understand yeah, yeah, that. But yeah, we that also, was. part of the reason was we delayed for a year any, any further discussion about the redistricting of the high schools. Longer than a year. Yeah. Well, so I believe like, they go together. Um, but, but originally we had expansion in the 2019 budget for Jamestown High School, and so that, that was delayed. So I think 2022 is, is a fluid number. I don't think that that's hard and fast. That's my perspective. I think I certainly support renewing for a year, but um, I think we need to look at, at what our funding partners are, are able to support um, our needs. It's, it's clear that, that all of our high schools are, are over capacity. That, that's, just, that's just a fact. All of our schools are over capacity except for one. I also um, support the renewal for the lease for one year. However, I do not want our school system to be hamstrung in any way past one year. I don't want us to feel like uh, based on a CIP that uh, is just that, it's a CIP um, for 2022, that if the Lafayette High School finds that it needs that space for any reason at all, that as a school board person, my priority is to look out for the, um, the needs first of our high school students at Lafayette High School and our high school students across the board at WJCC. This does not mean that I do not support the goals of CDR. They are not mutually exclusive. I think CDR is a wonderful organization. I have supported it. I have served on its, um, you know, its auction before. I support it every year. However, in my role as a school board member, my first priority is to serve the students of WJCC first. So I do not want us to be hamstrung in any way past one year. Um, this is somewhat related and um, would like staff to give clarification. We had a school board um, question, school board member question about um, the removal of the CDR playground equipment. And so um, we were asking about so that, that equipment that has not been used during construction of the auxiliary gym. And so we had questions about security and how students would access that and how it would be moved and if, if it needed to be put back there. And we were given a figure of ten to $12,000 to remove that playground equipment, which appears to be like tiny ty tykes, plastic playground equipment that's not like attached to the ground. So I was just curious about that cost. Asking what it would be to replace it or what it was to remove it? So the answer that we got to an SBQ was that it would cost ten to $12,000 to remove that playground equipment. And so the playground that Ms. Hummel and I were speaking to at the last work session is, is literally tiny tots, plastic playground equipment that I could pick up and put in a truck and remove. I think you were referring to the playground, which is immediately in front of CDR, which is no. close to the, I can ask Ms. Thomas or Mr. Scott to, to, to reference, but if you're talking about the Tiny Tots playground, the plastic equipment? We're talking about the playground that has not been in use while the auxiliary gym has been under construction. So the plastic equipment that's been moved away, not what's, not what's next to the tennis courts, not that equipment, the, the plastic equipment that has not been in use that has to be moved back now that the auxiliary gym is just about done. And our question was, how will CDR children access that and does that playground really need to be there? What would it cost to remove it? And the answer that we got was ten to 12,000. Move the entire playground next to the auxiliary gym that is going near the auxiliary gym is ten to $12,000. To what do you mean to move the entire? To remove it. You, your to question was to remove the playground. And what makes up that $10,000? Like what? Militia to remove the equipment that is there, to make it usable as, as just grass, it's just space. And what is in our current um, auxiliary gym budget for relocating it? They don't have any money there to relocate the playground at the, pre the present time that was not part of the auxiliary gym scope of work. 
We're confused. We are confused. We're confused. But it, okay. Yeah, I believe Mr. Hastings last time implied that it was already included in the budget for the auxiliary gym. It was not extra money. So we perhaps should revisit and get you, make sure we've got that information. I just want to make sure right. I have the question correct. Are you asking to remove the entire playground? There are two playgrounds. Okay, and that's the question I'm asking. Which playground are you referring? The one that has not been in use for the last two years. The one that was literally plastic playground equipment that was n not visible from the parking lot. It's not the one that's adjacent to, the tennis to building 900. It's not that one. It's okay. the other one that had to be... I guess altered in some and, way and, and not in use. There was some equipment removed from that playground in order to make the canopy. To, to build make the, the what? To build canopy. the canopy mm -hmm. toward the auto, toward so, the auxiliary gym. But so, the entire uh, playground was not removed. Just to make sure we're all staying in our roles, you know, the superintendent and staff recommend and we approve. So perhaps this these questions, these technical questions can be revisited and answered. I, I just want to make sure that Absolutely. the board is, understands but not before they take a vote, but just making sure what that recommendation is. Because we, we don't make, make a recommendation about a playground, you make a recommendation to us. Right, I think the only thing before the board tonight is the renewal of the lease for CDR to right. continue to use the 900 building. The playground use is not connected, it, it's part of... Well, if there is a connection, I think we should know about that, I guess is a good sure. way to... But can you get that information to us between now and July? 10th or whenever our next meeting is. Absolutely. Yeah, I would like to know, in renewing the lease for one year, is there any financial uh, liability on us in any way, shape, or form to do anything with that other playground? Anything else? Um, I'm sorry. I don't think you can answer that question. Why not? Because... Anybody can sue anybody for any reason. No, that's, that's not, not the question. About. Well, what do you, well, what's liability? What, where does when does liability come into play? Okay, not liability, expense. Well, then expense. Sorry, expense. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I have I have a couple questions. Um, is this is this action on behalf of the board time sensitive? Do we need to take action at the next meeting? I believe we're okay to the next meeting because the actual date on the renewal is it's September, um, August 31st, August. 2018. So we, we are okay with a July 10th vote okay. on this but that, one. But that's, that it, would, it shouldn't extend beyond that, is that correct? Absolutely, because it's a, an August renewal. Tonight, right? No, this is discussion. This is a proposed agenda. 9.06 oh, is sorry. not request for okay, renewal. Okay, sorry, please. sorry, you're right, Mr. Kelly. I was confused. Um, so, but, so to, but, July, if it has to be July. We, we can still make it work in July. Okay, thank you. Leave. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I have a question about the term of the lease. The process that we followed for this one this year, and I believe last year, was Ms. Thomas sent a letter to the division asking that the lease would be renewed. And, um, you know, I'm not an attorney, so I, uh, maybe I'm reading this incorrectly, but number one term B says that when the term is, and then it should be automatically renewed for each year. So I would just like to understand what that means, because we're not automatically renewing right now, but that's what I'm reading here. And so I'd like to understand if that lease language needs to be altered so that it's not automatic. It's, um, Steve Mead reviewed uh -huh. it, and it's automatic renewal with a request for extension, but you still need to approve it. Still need they, it can be automatically renewed with the extension with the request for an extension, but it still needs to be approved by the school board first. Can you show me where it says that? Because I don't yes. see that. Yeah, I think what Ms. Cook is, is asking is that it should it really have that language in it because it is absolutely not an automatic renewal. We're actually voting on it annually at this point in time, and perhaps uh, we could send it back to Mr. Mead and just get some clarification in the language that the board would be more comfortable with? Does that sound appropriate? I just want to make sure, because there's been, there's been misunderstanding in our CIP. When we sent our CIP request this year to the localities, we sent it with a cover letter that clearly stated that the outlying years with regard to high school space were essentially etched in jello until we went through a process in partnership with the localities 
And, um, and so they, they were clear that those were not hard dates or hard numbers. But um, I just want to be clear to our partners that, you know, that, that this is one year and not automatically. I support one year. I probably support year two. Um, in the next year, we'll find out if we need design to go into design in uh, July of 20. Um, but we don't know that now. And so I'd like to better have the, I just want to have clarity in this language because if I'm reading this, my assumption is that it automatically renews. We'll send it back to the attorney. I think that's appropriate to make sure the board's comfortable with the language. Does everybody else agree? No, I'm good with the language as it is now. I mean, because it says, it says very clearly that the lease is the same from the board for a term beginning September 1st, August 18, ending August 31st, 19, is renewable annually thereafter. Uh -huh. um, if you want to wordsmith the word automatically, but it's until canceled or amended by either party upon less than 90 days notice. So, I mean, I think... I think the I think the language is solid. I, I mean, if you go back and look at this year's language, it's going to say the same thing, and here we are voting on it to renew it for another year. So right. I mean, I'm I am comfortable voting on this tonight, and think okay. we should. Okay. Okay. Um, and then so back to the um, the soonest if so. There's a lot of ifs. If the school board adopts a request to renovate Lafayette as soon as possible. And if the funders approve that, the soonest the school division could take possession would be July of 20. So CDR would have to vacate at that time. But again, that's a lot of ifs. So it could be that that space isn't needed by the division, you know, till 21 or 22. If that's the case, I still have concerns with regard to chain of command and how we operate with um, partner agencies in our building as it relates to security. I, I don't, I'm concerned with people who are in our buildings day in, day out that don't report to our superintendent um, and, to, and who have charge of and, and, and responsibility for students that are, aren't our students. And so, and that's not just CDR, that's also a community action agency. And there are some changes being made to address that. But as I don't, that's not my job, you recommend, but as you and your staff, Dr. Heron, look at security and kind of do a security audit in addition to physical space and drills and, um, and staffing and behavioral health needs and all of those things along the continuum, I would like to know that you're looking in, you know, at who's in our building every day that you know that aren't our students or that are not our employees and whether that's an appropriate thing in terms as it relates to security like school resource officers well right exactly but they serve our students and uh, they don't report to our superintendent no they do not but they serve our children at large the whole population um, another group would be the therapeutic day treatment therapists who are serving our children so it does exist but um, I think it needs to be looked at through the lens of security because right now um, some of our employees, and there are volunteers in and out of our schools every day, and there are nonprofits providing services to our students in our schools every day, but not necessarily day in, day out. And as that pertains to security, I would just like you, you and your staff to look at it through that lens, and if you're okay with it, then, then I'm okay with it. But um, I think it's important to look at because the stakes are pretty high there. Um, but I also want to recognize that if CDR is not in at Lafayette, they have to raise essentially $70,000 a year every year, year over a year to make up that money just in the match, um, not to mention rent that they'd have to pay. So I think that it's important to recognize that there is a significant um, fiscal impact to our actions if we decide not to renew in a future year that we have to be cognizant of. But, but I am concerned about the security aspect as far as our responsibility um, to, to peep individuals that are not our students and not our employees. So if, um, to Mr. Kelly's point, if everybody's ready to adopt for a year, we can address it later on in the, um, meeting and accept a motion. Anything else on the CDR lease? 
Yeah, I have a, yes. I have a question. Has the uh, matter concerning CDR been brought up by uh, you at the uh, liaison committee meeting with our funding partners? I'm sorry, Dr. Beers, I didn't hear that. Has the, C the, the, the CDR matter, have you raised that with uh, members of the uh, uh, liaison committee from the county and from the city? No, that's a good idea. It's Would you a good like idea, don't you think? Okay. Because you might find they might not totally agree with uh, what you're thinking about, what we're thinking about. Sir, one other thing I would also like to mention, we have one of the most successful preschool programs in the country. It has been recognized for years. There has been a wait list for that program. That program would not exist if it had not been many years ago due to the cooperation and collaboration with CDR. So I'm really reluctant to, to throw too many things out there when it comes to CDR. And, you know, I, I know we have agonized over building 900 so many times, so many meetings. Like, it is such a valuable piece of property that it may impact 12,000 students. Well, of course, that's not true. So I, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little disappointed here at this part of this discussion. Anything else? All right, that brings us to action items. The first is um, the highlight of the evening. Um, Item 9.01, um, Resolution R-16-18, reappointment of Dr. Owen E. Heron as Division Superintendent. Mr. Kelly, may Madam I? Madam Chair, I move approval of Resolution R-16-18, reappointment of Dr. Owen Heron as Division Superintendent. And with permission, can I read the proclamation? Uh, that would be great, and then I'll ask for a second. Okay. Um, reappointment of Dr. Owen Heron as Division Superintendent. Whereas Dr. Owen E. Heron was appointed Division Superintendent of Schools for a term commencing February 8, 2017 and ending June 30th, 2020. And whereas Dr. Heron has submitted her resignation effective June 30th, 2018. <coughs> Pause for dramatic effect. And whereas the school board wishes to accept Dr. Heron's resignation and to reappoint Dr. Heron as division superintendent for a term commencing July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2022. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the school board accepts Dr. Heron's resignation effective June 30th, 2018. And be it further resolved that Dr. Heron has appointed division superintendent of schools for a term commencing July 1st, 2018 and ending June 30th, 2022. Be it further resolved that the chairman and the clerk are authorized to execute an employment agreement with Dr. Harriman, a copy of which is attached. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Ms. Ombi. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Oh, come on, Dr. Beers. Say something. I totally support this resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Harriman's mom's in the room. You got to say something. Uh, All right. I call the question. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, Please tell me you're kidding, Dr. Beers. It failed for lack of a second. Um, um, Mr. <laughs> Kelly. Uh, I just uh, um, would just like to reaffirm the, the, uh, this uh, resolution and that um, I have, have appreciated Dr. Heron's service with us, not only for the past uh, year and a half or so when she, as her, mm. a superintendent, but uh, her time before this um, serving the school division. Uh, she has done an exceptional job, and uh, I really have a lot of confidence and appreciate her, uh, her good work um, for our students. And I think that uh, we are well served by our, our uh, superintendent, and I look forward to uh, uh, many more years to come. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mrs. Young? All I can say is welcome aboard. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome aboard because um, I... I have complete confidence in the decisions. I've been very uh, impressed with the, the organization changes that you've made that I think are very positive for our division. So I'm, I'm more than happy to support this resolution. Thank you, Mrs. 
Taylor. Yes, thank you, Dr. Heron, for being such an asset to our school division. You've been a steadfast leader in guiding us toward the achievement of the goals and mission we've set forth as a school board, and we're happy to have you. This is Hummel. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can tell from tonight's discussion, our board might not always agree with each other on many different issues, but we stand united together in total and full agreement that we are very happy to, um, to extend and have you spend four more years with us and many more past that. <clears throat> Dr. Heron would just like to say I, I'm very pleased with your leadership and with your leadership style and I think it gives this community the continuity that we're looking for and so I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you for another four years so thank you for agreeing to, um, to work with this um, board and our community in such a, an eloquent way. Yeah and I'd just like to echo everybody's appreciation of you, your service to this division and to this community has been exemplary over the years, and we are I have been delighted to watch you uh, really embrace the role of superintendent and, 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 and do it beautifully. I think my favorite thing about working with you is the, the rare opportunity that I get to walk into a classroom with you. You light up, and um, that's a real indication that you are meant to be here. So um, I'm glad that you're here, and before we take a vote, would you like to say anything? I just want to thank you all for your incredible support. I've had a, a really enjoyable year and a half, and I really look forward to continuing my time with, with the, the division. It has been an honor to serve. I can honestly say I love coming to work every day, and, and I love the job that I do. But I do have to say that I couldn't be successful at all tonight without the senior staff that are sitting in front of you tonight, and with your permission, I'd like all the senior staff members to stand so that we can actually honor the work that they do tonight, because without a team, I'm nothing. So if you would please stand, senior staff. And for the opportunity to serve. If there's no other discussion, it's been moved and seconded. Ms. Serzer, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Young, aye. Dr. Beers, aye. Ms. Hummel, aye. Mr. Kelly, aye. <laughs> aye. Mrs. Taylor, aye. Ms. Cook, aye. All right, the motion passes. You know, so congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, Mom. <laughs> Um, okay, so that brings us to 9.02 VHSL membership. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we approve VHSL memberships for Jamestown, Lafayette, and Warhill High Schools for the 2018-2019 school year. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Hummel. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. The motion passes. That brings us to 9.03 Federal Program Grants 2018-2019. Can I get a motion, please? Madam Chair, I recommend that the school board approve the federal program's grants applications for the 2018-2019 school year. Thank you, Dr. Beers. Second, please. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Young. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. 9.04 revised policy JHCF student wellness. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we revive, revise policy JHCF student wellness. That we approve. Approve. Okay. Sorry. Is there a second? Second. We moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. No. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. 
Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Okay. That brings us to item 9.05, revised policy JGD, JGE due process safeguard. Um, can I have a motion, please, Mr. Kelly? Madam Chair, I move approval of the said policy. Does that work? Policy JGD, JGE due process safeguards. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Um, Ms. Bourgeois, do you want, Dr. Heron, do you want to ask Ms. Bourgeois to? to yeah, Ms. Bourgeois is going to clarify a couple of the changes so that the board and the public are, are very aware of what's been changed in the policy since last time. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening again. Um, until yesterday, we were bringing forward the same policy that we presented two weeks ago. We did receive communication from our um, legal counsel and in implementing the new state code regarding suspensions for students in kindergarten through th third grade, she had reviewed our policy uh, one more time and recommended the addition on line 140 and 141 regarding long-term suspensions. If you recall, K-3 net can now only be suspended um, for three days per or less per incident, unless there's some mitigating um, circumstances, which have been added to our policy, and that was presented to you two weeks ago. What we did not do was address the timeline should a recommendation for long-term suspension occur for a student in kindergarten through third grade. So we have ad just addressed that timeline and said, or in the case of a student in grades K through three, the hearing will be held within three school days of the recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Bourgeois. Any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, it's been moved and seconded. Will you call the roll, please, Ms. Serza? Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. All right, that brings us to 9.06, the 2018-2019 Code of Conduct. Mr. Kelly, can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move approval of the 2018-2019 Code of Conduct as presented. To reflect the amendment in. To reflect the amendment of. Policy JGD, JGE. For policy yeah. JGE, JGD. I didn't get the quote. The Is that right, code. Ms. Bourgeois? Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. <sighs> Thank you. Any discussion? Yes. Yes. I just um, wanted to touch base. We um, added some more language to dis disruption in classrooms and insubordination is, is one word that we added and I just wanted to make sure that we will have systems in place and we'll evaluate our data to ensure that we are not disproportionately um, categorizing populations of students as insubordinate. Yes, ma'am. We actually have some training already scheduled for later in the summer. Okay. So that will become a training component with our administrators. Just for the public's sake, um, the code of conduct was, uh, is the motion before us is to adopt the code of conduct as presented, but also to reflect the changes we just adopted in the policy prior to this vote, just to clarify why that motion was so long. But I'd like to echo Ms. Ombi's uh, comments and hope that we, you know, really rev up MTSS to make sure that we're not disproportionate on, in application of that particular word. Anything else? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Can you call the roll, Ms. Serza, please? Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Motion passes. And then that brings us to 9.07, request from Child Development Resources for lease renewal at Lafayette High School. Can I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move approval of the Child Development Resources <coughs> lease renewal at Lafayette High School uh, 180901 lease WJCC CDR. I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. All right, thank you. Um, that concludes the action item section of our agenda. And then we move to board member comments and requests. Dr. Beers, do you have anything to share tonight? No, I, I'm not. Kelly? Madam Chair, I just want to um, echo some of, the, some of the thoughts that we've had about uh, the graduation ceremonies this weekend. I thought the, uh, the staff did an exceptional job in organizing those uh, graduation ceremonies. I, I 
they were very well done. The um, live web streaming was was exceptional and uh, allowed uh, family members who were not in in Williamsburg to to participate and and watch the ceremonies. And so I thought uh, I just like to uh, to thank the staff and uh, the faculties of all the different schools uh, for their uh, exceptional participation and uh, appreciation for their uh, attendance at our graduation ceremonies. So, thank you. Well, uh, well ditto to what uh, Mr. Kelly said. I'm always impressed with how smoothly uh, those uh, ceremonies come off and uh, they seem effortless, but I know that is not the case. And uh, because I'm always happy that there's that little glass of water underneath and, and, and it's always fresh. So I know that takes thought, but I also, uh, when families come in, I, there, there can't be any miscommunication about how well those are organized. So thank you to the staff for that. Also want to wish our uh, 2018 graduates success, and uh, um, we've got a lot of wonderful experiences they had. Uh, I also want to congratulate the GED students who graduated. That was a remarkable ceremony, and um, always, um, with being there with the families and just seeing how happy they are that their students have completed that. That was wonderful. I also attended the early college um, celebration and, um, and we are expanding that program, which I think is one of the most outstanding programs we have for our, our high school uh, students. Um, also, um, I'm going to have the opportunity of going to Fort Knox um, and, and found out that that is a place that is the headquarters of JROTC which I have not lost sight of. So I will be bringing back some information for, for us from Fort Knox and uh, no many, sorry. But I will be bringing back information. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Mrs. Taylor. All right, to build off of what Mr. Kelly and Ms. Young have already said, I was also able to attend graduation on Saturday. It's a very enjoyable time when we get to see the unique personalities of our schools. And my favorite part is definitely the student speeches. I always enjoy those very much. And I hope our graduates and all our students are enjoying summer. Ms. Hummel? Um, I actually want to outline some of the things that the staff had to do to make our commencement go as smoothly as it did. And um, so can we have Ms. Bourgeois come up here? Is it possible? Ms. Paula. And Ms. Paula, the two of you, because I, I just want to say this to you so that everyone hears all of the things that go into making commencement happen for three high schools on the same day. And I'm sure I'm forgetting things, but I'm going to list them out here. So before the whole thing starts, you've got to work with Kaplan Arena to set up Kaplan Arena to worry about the seating, the limited mobility, the parking, the security, the live streaming, the photographers, the flower arrangements that are color coordinated for each high school. You actually have to worry about how the banners come up and go down for every single uh, ceremony. Okay, so that's just, that's one thing you have to do. You also have to worry about booking and setting up and testing all the, uh, the AV in Kaplan Arena. You have to make arrangements for those big black curtains to be brought up on the right and the left so that you're securing the area so that it, it makes it a better environment for commencement. You have to book the fife and drums three times. You have to um, coordinate and prepare three different graduation programs by meeting with principals, printing the programs, making sure all the names are included properly and the spellings are included properly. You need to review and approve all of the speakers, all of those wonderful commencement speakers. They don't just come up there and are allowed to just, just talk. They need to actually, aren't they vetted? Schools are a huge part of that. Yes. So um, also, you have to coordinate the efforts of three bands and three choirs, setting up the risers, making sure instruments are transported safely, organizing the band and the choir members to participate. And some board members have to even make sure that their children are actually there on time. 
to participate in the band, you have to set up for that William Person room, which is the, uh, the room that all the faculty and the dignitaries meet in. You have to make sure, you've got mirrors set up so that people can put their gowns on. You've got linens on the table, catering that changes throughout the day, security in that room. You also have to spend a lot of time communicating with staff and students and the community about arrival time and instructions for processions. You have to corral us and other dignitaries to make sure that we're actually on the dais in the right order at the right time. And then somehow, throughout this entire day, you maintain a smile, a relaxed attitude throughout the whole thing. And Miss DePaula is sitting there as we are, as we're ready to go on. She's like, everyone smile. We're having a good time. So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you so much. It takes a village to put on a commencement. And you two, I guess, were the, the leaders of it. It is, it is absolutely a huge, huge team effort. Schools do a lot of the prep work and great to work with. And our barometer is we're happy if we have electricity. So we're <laughs> <laughs> good. Clean up confetti between a, between. A, oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Clean up the confetti. The confetti. We, yeah, we did apologize about that. <laughs> Thank they, you. They had now I know what Miss Hummel was thinking about during all the graduations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was very kind. <laughs> um, Miss Ombi. So ditto multiple times, but um, one of the things that I think um, is particularly special in our community and I learned from um, a speaker at our GED ceremony is that not only do we have and celebrate our, our graduates um, who complete their high school um, requirements, but we also celebrate our, our GED graduates and our early college graduates. And then at, in the middle of the summer, we will also celebrate students who complete summer school and are able to complete their graduation requirements. So um, the fact that we celebrate all of our students recognizing that every student chooses their own path is, is something that I appreciate in this division and, and thank all the staff for coordinating because it's not just one graduation of multiple three within one day, then we also have multiple ceremonies um, in May, June, and then July. So thank you for that. Anything else? Um, so yeah, I wanted to echo everybody's um, appreciation for the graduation ceremony. All three of them were wonderful. I also wanted to express my appreciation for everyone who participated in making, in making the exceptional games happen. They were really, a one, it was wonderful to be there again for the second year, and it's, it's an event that uh, I, I think is gonna grow. Everybody's very Absolutely. excited about it, and the best part was watching all the children come off the bus and, and, and be cheered on, and um, the faces were just priceless. So it was a wonderful event, and I'm glad everybody got to be a champion that day and then I also wanted to let everyone know that I had the um, the honor of attending the Berkeley High School 50th class reunion reception and I'll just kind of pass this down but it was um, a great event and the school board in April passed a resolution in honor of the legacy that that class left for our community it was the last all-black uh, graduating high school in WJC uh, all-black uh, graduating class uh, in WJCC and um, Everybody was dressed to the nines and had a blast. So it was, it was really good to be with them that evening. So if there's nothing else, that brings us to upcoming events. On the 27th of June at 8.15 in the morning in room 309 in the annex at the school board and central office, the policy committee will meet. And then our upcoming meetings, our next meeting is July 10th, which begins at 6 o'clock with a closed session, and that's in room 309 at the annex uh, in the school board office, and followed at 6.30 with a, a regular a work session and action item meeting. Um, and then a closed session on August 7th at 5.30 um, in room 309 in the annex, followed by a work session and action items at 6.30 also in the annex. And then also just a reminder that the, uh, the items that we talked about, um, VSBA um, delegate and the laptops and the strategic plan will all migrate to that July meeting. So if there is nothing else, I will adjourn. <laughs>